The movie begins with an unknown girl desperately crying for her life. As the agony shines in the darkness, several people punish the girl by piercing her flesh with a sharp object. Shortly, a prayer gets declared to unleash the girl's corrupt soul to death. Helpless, the girl becomes burnt alive while hanging in the tree, signifying an enigmatic melancholy in history. Several years later, the sun rises for another beginning. Disgraced journalist Jerry, answers a call from his colleague, who gives him the new task details. The colleague emphasizes that the new task involves cattle mutilation for 150 bucks. Without delay, Jerry proceeds to Banfield to investigate and cover the story. There, he meets an older man who owns a cow. Unfortunately, the cow shows no signs of damage or mutilation. Amidst their conversation, a man of faith named Father Hagen, interrupts the conversation, stating that the cow should not be in the churchyard as it provides a total mess. A little later, Jerry hears mysterious whispers, leading him to go closer to an eerie tree. A shimmering object illuminates under the tree, causing Jerry to dig deeper and see a Kern baby doll with chains. He then sees a date, February 31, 1845, and breaks it eventually for creative photography. Afterward, Jerry goes to one of the best restaurants in the city and enjoyably eats. During the night, Jerry drives his vehicle on a dark road. The whispering winds fill the air as the evening gets deeper. A little later, Jerry gets shocked upon seeing a teenage girl standing in the middle of the road. Avoiding the accident, Jerry navigates his car into a tree causing him to crash. Luckily, Jerry remains conscious and tries to follow the girl. He roams the ghostly woods and tries to check on her. After a few moments of walking, Jerry finally witnesses the girl named Alice, kneeling in front of the mysterious tree. He walks closer to the bewildering event and hears Alice speaking and praying. Only the moon is with them. Just as Jerry touches, Alice loses consciousness. Next, Jerry carries the unconscious Alice to her guardian and uncle, Father Hagen. Hagen then calls Natalie for the emergency. Upon arriving, Natalie checks Alice, who is now doing sign language, implying she's okay. When they are about to leave, Jerry confusingly shares that he heard Alice speak several words at the tree. But Natalie states that Alice is deaf and has not spoken since birth. She then accompanies Jerry into a motel for his stay. The following day, Alice prays to Mary's statue while Jerry speaks to his colleague about having another religious angle instead. As the mass starts, Jerry offers a visit to dig deeper for a better story. Amidst the ceremony, Alice hears a whisper again, so she stands up and slowly follows the voices. As this happens, everyone stares at Alice and joins her too. Later, Alice reaches the mysterious tree and encounters a woman's soul. When Hagen attempts to touch Alice, an unexplainable miracle occurs. Alice begins speaking, which mesmerizes everyone. She starts moving her jaw, telling everyone that the soul's name is Mary and that Mary wants everyone to come back again. Intrigued, Jerry takes each chance to document the happenings for a breakthrough. Next, Alice tests her hearing capability with the help of Natalie. Meanwhile, Jerry calls his former female colleague to convince her about a religious divine story. In response, the female colleague only states that Jerry is good at fabricating stories and almost ruins the paper's reputation. The next day, a demonic creature emerges from the water, crawling for new prey. Suddenly Jerry wakes up only to realize it was a nightmare. One day, Banfield gets surrounded by many people who want miracles. Hagen explains that Alice needs to stay inside, but Alice suddenly walks in front. She slowly proceeds to the enigmatic tree and touches it with faith. Later, Alice sees the woman's soul and surprisingly speaks to everyone. She then sees a paralyzed boy and asks if he has faith in Mary. The boy suddenly manages to stand up and ambles in faith. Mesmerized by the unexplainable, everyone trembles on the ground and begins praying to Virgin Mary. As this happens, Jerry passionately documents his news story. The statue inside the church starts releasing bloody tears, implying misery. One day, the Banfield miracle gets released on national television, causing several press conferences. In one forum, Bishop James explains by sharing similar stories from the past. He shares that a French girl once experienced the same visitations in 1858. He also shares that three shepherd children in 1917 reported apparitions of the Virgin Mary. He elaborates that several people witnessed the Mary apparition. Lastly, he emphasizes that Banfield could be a shrine if the miracles are proven genuine. Next, the Monsignor also arrives and explains the investigation of the alleged healings. He strictly implies that the illness must be incurable, and the cure must be instantaneous and complete for it to be called a miracle. Later, Alice arrives at the conference, where she gets interviewed by several reporters. 
She answers Greg's question stating that Mary wants everyone's faith. Then, the Monsignor and the Bishop express their hesitations during the discussion. But Jerry is confident about his claim. Meanwhile, the church installed shelters and dividers for the enigmatic tree. Hagen silently observes until he finds a Kern baby doll. He picks up and holds the broken doll while a demonic figure secretly arises. Alice however, enjoys her moments listening to music with Jerry. Soon, Jerry sets his camera for another interview with Alice about Mary. Alice shares that all Mary wants is for people to believe her. She says that healing comes from believing in Mary. She also elaborates that Jerry needs Mary. Unexpectedly, Hagen arrives and stops the activity. He expresses his disappointment in taking advantage of Alice's experience. Hagen believes turning the church into a shrine will cause more evil and danger to Alice. As Jerry goes to the motel, a female demonic figure seems to whisper and follow. Curious, he further researches the controversy in Banfield. The following day, Alice sings since she wants to be part of the choir. Hagen feels captivated upon listening to his niece's symphony. In the middle of their session, Hagen violently coughs, signifying his worsening condition. As Hagen barely breathes and collapses on the ground, Alice suddenly asks if he believes in Mary. Hagen states yes while Jerry is calling 911. Just as Alice lays her hands on Hagen's chest, a miracle appears when Hagen can effortlessly breathe. Overwhelmed by the discovery, Jerry and the Monsignor validate the claim by going to a medical field expert, Natalie. Subsequently, Natalie states that Hagen's incurable illness is now gone based on laboratory reports. Thus, Jerry proves his claims, making the Bishop and the Monsignor also believe it. The news about the Banfield miracle continues to spread worldwide, and people begin calling Alice a savior. Luckily, the female colleague calls Jerry again for an offer. Jerry insists on an expensive deal in the organization, and the colleague unhesitatingly considers it. Meanwhile, Alice expresses her gratitude to Jerry. She adds that Mary is happy because Jerry allows people to believe her. In the meantime, Hagen grabs his cigarettes and sees the smoke traveling in a specific direction. Then, he sees a piece of a book containing the revelation and the spell of a curse. As this happens, Jerry and Natalie talk over coffee. Jerry shares that his reason for fabricating stories in the past is fame. He then shares that he saw a Kern baby doll wrapped in a chain with a February 31st date. Stunned, Natalie shares that they can be lucky, but those dolls are also used to trap souls. The Kern baby gets wrapped in the chain with an impossible date to trap the evil spirit forever. Curious, they resume their puzzling topic as they walk in the woods. There, Jerry's attention gets captivated by the same creak he sees in his dreams. He then realizes that the church was built in 1845. Shortly, a demonic apparition emerges but disappears immediately. One night, Hagen notices someone who enters the confession room. He then enters to listen to the unknown individual's confession. The session begins like a regular confession. However, tension arises when Hagen hears a confession about leading souls to perdition. It is then revealed that fake Mary visited the confession room. She condemns Hagen for doubting her power after receiving an article. She then leaves a threat of taking Hagen's life. Alarmed by the discovery, Hagen exits and gets distracted by the sound of a piano. Surprisingly, a female demonic ghost floats in the air, trying to attack Hagen. Meanwhile, Jerry goes to the church to share the truth with Hagen. He calls his name but hears no response. Just as he opens the confession room, Hagen's body appears, hanging from above, making it appear as if he took his own life. Afterward, Jerry expresses his sadness to Bishop James. The bishop emphasizes that now that Banfield is reborn, they must care for the faith to remain. The following day, Alice showcases her sadness in an interview session with Jerry. Alice indicates never to doubt Mary's power. Not long after, Alice states that Mary has spoken to her again, saying that doubt weakens faith. During the night, Jerry goes to his motel room as if a demonic ghost is following him. He bravely enters his room and continues the research. He watches his interview video with Alice again. To his surprise, he witnesses a ghostly element approaching Alice, leading him to conclude something. Hagen's last funeral service is about to start. With all the chaos, Jerry approaches Natalie and states Hagen might not have taken his life. He then asks Natalie about the file's location. They enter a room and immediately search for documents that contain Latin words about demons and witches. Shortly, Jerry locates the book, which includes the truth about what they experience in Banfield. Natalie reads the book wherein a lady named Mary Elnor, once claimed that Virgin Mary is speaking through her. 
she reads the information about doubters facing tragic ends, and how all believers will experience perdition. As the passage continues, they learn that the town fought back by submerging Mary in the creek. Punishing and sealing the spirit in the Kern baby doll. Thrilled, Jerry realizes that Mary killed Hagen after discovering the truth. As this transpires, Mary's ghost revisits Alice to speak in the middle of the funeral service. Thus, Alice states that Mary wants to hold a service at the shrine tonight. She then invites everyone to believe in Mary and offer their faith in the upcoming night. The puzzling misery expands when Jerry and Natalie see Mary's demonic ghost. Terrified, they run for their lives until they successfully exit the dark room. Next, Jerry calls his female colleague to stop the story for everyone's safety despite the possible end to his career. Unhesitatingly, Jerry consults the bishop and the Monsignor to reveal the truth. He then states they should not continue the service as Mary will claim the souls. Unfortunately, the bishop does not believe him and plans to continue the service at night. The search for truth remains as Jerry goes to the diocese archives. There, he sees Mary's last details and confessions and figures out that Alice is Mary's descendant. He then shares the details with Natalie, including Mary's phrase, I live through my children. They start concluding that Mary will live through Alice but the phone signal gets cut off. As Jerry continuously reads the passage, the letters gradually disappear. Not long after, Mary's demonic ghost emerges, causing Jerry to run and throw the table. When Mary's ghost corners Jerry, the Monsignor arrives and recites a Latin prayer. Unfortunately, the ink in the book also disappears. The Monsignor declares his prayer until the spirit leaves them. The preparation for the service materializes and the bishop advises Alice. On the other hand, Alice starts hearing whispers to start the service quickly. Meanwhile, the Monsignor attempts to bless the Kern baby doll to trap Mary again. Jerry then shares that he once broke a Kern baby doll that released Mary's evil spirit. As the bishop tries to begin, Mary's ghost arrives. Shortly, Mary causes a cross to fall off and impale the Monsignor to death. As the Monsignor resides in the fire, the statue releases bloody tears, signifying a tribulation. Natalie and Jerry briskly run for their safety and plan to ruin the service. Jerry concludes that to stop people from faith, you must create doubts. The Feast of the Immaculate commences in the shrine. Right after the bishop speaks, Alice stands in front, inviting everyone to praise and believe in Mary, the Lady of Banfield. While Alice recites the prayer, her eyes become strange, as if another soul is occupying them. When the prayer is about to end, Jerry appears and interrupts the service. Natalie tries to get Alice's attention by stating Mary is deceiving her. Meanwhile, Jerry stands in the middle, declaring that the miracles are fake. He speaks up, saying that he fabricates the stories and that Hagen took his own life. On the contrary, Mary's voice whispers to Alice to continue the service or she'll make her deaf again. But Natalie tries her best to convince Alice that Mary is using her. The awakening of truth begins when Alice starts emphasizing that Jerry is right. All believers and the majority become disgusted and disappointed. Alice starts declaring that Mary is not real. Seconds pass, and the surroundings get filled with fire. Natalie saves the paralyzed boy while everyone tries to escape the shrine. As the flames get bigger, Mary reveals herself and turns the bishop into ashes. She then chases Jerry to kill and burn him. Just as Mary attempts to attack him, Alice blocks her way and sacrifices her life. When Alice drops to the floor, Mary's demonic ghost starts fading and losing. Unexpectedly, Jerry offers a prayer wishing for Alice's revival. The faith results in Alice's redemption, who is now back to being deaf. The movie ends with Natalie, Alice, and Jerry visiting Hagen's grave as a commemoration. As they contemplate the past evenings, they will face the new sunrise. However, the Virgin Mary cries blood as if the unholy never ends in the core of humanity. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.